Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play an old Guns N' Roses tune called Paradise City. And it's going to start on a really cool G major chord. And the way we're going to start, we're going to put first finger on the A string on the second fret. Second finger is going to go low E on the third fret. Third finger is going to go to the B string on the third fret. And the pinky is going to go to the high E on the, on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that makes a G major chord, and it sounds really, really happy. And then from that G major chord, we're, we're going to actually just take the first finger and the second finger from where we are and shift to the D and the A strings. And that's going to make something called a C major 9. But just to walk through that whole chord, you got one on the D on the second fret, a second on the A on the third fret, third finger on the B string on the third fret, and the pinky on the high E on the third fret. And you're kind of strumming just from the A string to the high E string with, with that chord. And that's called C major 9. It sounds really, really happy. And then from there, we're going to do a really similar shift. We're going to take the first finger and go to the G string on the second fret, second finger on the D string on the second fret, and we're going to leave the third finger and the fourth finger where they are on, on the B string third and the high E third. And if you strum just the top four strings with that, that's kind of an F major 11. <laughs> or a F major 13, because we got a D note in it. We're kind of playing the root and the third, and then we're playing a six, and then we're playing the nine. Uh, of an F. So let, let's call that F major 9. <laughs> um, even though you could call it a couple different things. And then from that F, we're going to go back to the C major 9, and then we're going to go back to the G major. So our intro progression and also our chorus progression is kind of G major, C major 9, F major 9, C major 9, G major. G major, C major 9, F major 9, C major 9, G major 9. But a lot of times with a song like this, to make it more interesting, I like adding something called a strum pattern to it. And one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So if you, we could just try that for, on the G chord just to kind of get used to it. Down, down, up. At the end, we're going to end up just half in that strum pattern. So when we get there, we'll have the F with the down, down, up, and then the C with the down, down, up. F with the down, down, up, C with the down, down, up. And then the other chords, we could do that whole strum pattern. We'll talk about another strum pattern in a minute. But you can have that G with the down, down, up, up, down, up, C, down, down, up, up, down, up, F, down, down, C, down, down, G, down, down, up, up, down. on this though, just to mention this really quick, is Guns N' Roses is actually tuning down a half step. So instead of going E, B, G, D, A, E, they're tuning down E flat, B flat, G flat, D flat, A flat, E flat. But I'm, I'm just doing this in standard tuning because I think it's a little bit easier just to kind of digest. Um, but then from there, um, we're basically going to keep that chorus part going, um, but then th there's some really cool licks that kind of come in all around that part. Um, and one of them is, is where the electric guitar kicks in and, and there's some things called power chords. And what a power chord is, is where you're playing the root of a chord and a fifth of a chord. And if you counted up the alphabet G, A, B, C, D, a G note and a D note would make a G5. So if you played first finger on, on the third fret on the low E string and third finger on the A string on the fifth fret and played just those two notes, that's called a G5 power chord. There's kind of a long sustained part that this, this Slash is playing on this where he's going G major with a G5. And instead of playing a C major, he's playing a C5 power chord where you take that, that shape and then shift it to the A string third and the D string fifth and play just the A and the D string for the C chords. And then if you take that same idea and shift it by another string to the D string on, on the third and the G string on the fifth and play just those two strings, that's called an F5 power chord. So another way to kind of go through that, that, that chorus part, you'd have G5, C5, F5, C5, G5. G5. But there's 
also a really cool guitar lick that kind of comes in right there. And there are a lot of really cool licks in this Slash of the Man. But um, it starts out on the 12th fret on the D string. And we're going to do a hammer on from 12 to 14. So you're going to kind of play 12 and just kind of put the finger down to carry the sound to 14th fret. And then you go to the G string 12 and play that twice. And then we're going to go back to the D string 14, 12, but we're going to do a pull off from 14, 12. So you play the 14 and then let the sound kind of carry back to the 12. So you got 12, 14 hammer on and then G string twice on the 12, and then 14, 12 pull off on the D. And then we're going to go 15 on the B string. And then we're going to go to 14 on the G string and kind of press into the guitar and bend it up. And then we're going to go back to 12th fret on the G string at the end of that leg. So that whole leg got 12, 14 hammer on, 12, 12, 14, 12 pull off on the D, 15 on the B, 14 bend on the G, bend, 14 bend on the G, 12 on the G. And then we do that leg again. We got 12, 14 hammer on, 12, 12. 14, pull off to 12 on the D, 15 on the D string, G string bend, 14, 14, and then 12. And at the end, we're going to kind of play 13 on the B string and do a bend there. And then another bend and play 13. And then we're going to go to 14 on the G and do a bend. And then go back to 12 on the G. And then D string 14. And then tw uh, 12 on the D. And then we're going to go G string on the 14 and do a bend there. So we got, at the end, you got 13 bend, 13, 13, 14 bend on the G, 12, 14, and then 12, 14. Oh, uh, my bad, yeah. So then on that tag, we got 13 bend twice on the B string, and then 13 straight up, and then we're going to go 14 on the G and do a bend there and then 12 on the G, and then 14 on the D, and then go back to the 14 on the G for a bend. So we got 13 bend, 13, 13, 14 bend on the G, 12, 14, 14 on the G bend. So I think that's a kind of a cool lick to try and add in too, and that's kind of around that chorus part. But that, another thing that I like to do with, with this particular song is instead of working my strum pattern off the down, down, up, up, down, up, sometimes it can feel really good to work it off a 16th note instead. And what I mean by that is an eighth note is where if, if you took your foot tap and kind of divided it into two parts, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, we call that an eighth note. If you divided that into four parts, then we call it a 16th. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One of my favorite strum patterns for, for this particular song is, is working on a 16th pattern, and it's a long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, up. And what I mean by that is like if you took the G and just did it down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you do on the first beat. On the second beat, you do a down on one, a down on three, and an up on four. So you have one, two, three, four. up on two and a down on three. So you go one, two, three, four, one up, down, one up, down, one up, down, one up, down. And on the last beat, you'd be doing down, up, down, up, right along with your one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four, down, up, 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 down. So we put all that together, then you have long, down, 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 up, up, down. is when you get to the, the F and the C where they were kind of halfing, you'd half the strum pattern. So on the F, you'd do the down, 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 up, and then do the same thing on the C major 9. Down, 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 up, and then you go back to the whole strum pattern on, on the G at the end. But just to try that all the way through the chorus, you'd have the G with down, 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 From there, from that chorus, we're going to end up on our verse part. And our verse is actually working around something called a G minor chord. But a G minor is kind of, kind of a, and we'll talk about what G minor is, 
But if that's difficult, actually because it's a bar chord, <laughs> you could just do G5 too as a substitute for that. But a whole G minor, you take the first finger and put them across the entire third fret, third finger on the A string on the fifth fret, and the pinky on the D string on, on, the, on the fifth fret. And if you strum all those together, that makes a G minor chord. It sounds really, really sad. And our, our verse part would basically be working around the G minor chord, and we could actually even do that same strum pattern. We have the G minor down, 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 down up, up, down, down. You kind of have that strum pattern down, 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 up, and then we'd be going to a C. And you could do that as the C major nine that we were doing. C major nine. So, so we have John a G minor down, 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 down. around that that in the verse part and it starts out on the low E on the third fret so instead of playing the chord part you could do the lick instead you go third fret on the low E and then we go first fret on the low E and then second fret on the low E and then third fret on the low E and then we kind of do that again back to one two three but then we're gonna go back to first finger on the low E on the first and then back to three on, on the low E and then back to the first fret, fret on the low E, and then back to the third fret on, on the low E, and then we're gonna go to the A string on the first fret. So we got three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, G, F, F sharp, G, F, F sharp, G, F, G, F, G, B flat. <laughs> so that could be a cool way to do it too, is that three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. So you could do that for all the G minors, and then when you get to the C, you could even do just that big break on the C, and then there's a really cool tag lick at the end of that where you do third fret on the A string as a bend, and then from there we go back to first fret on the A, and then third fret on the A, and then first fret on the A, and then go to Louis on the third. So we got three bend, three one, three one on the A, third fret on the Louis. And on the solo, the solo starts around the, the G minor licks that they were kind of doing for our verse. But then from G minor, we're going to be going to an A minor. And one way to do an A minor is as a bar chord. If we took this shape as the G minor and just slid it over to 5th fret, that would be one way to play an A minor where you've got bar on the 5th fret, 3rd finger on the A, pinky on the, on the D string on the 7th. And that would be an A minor, the 16th note. into the bridge part and for the bridge actually I like using some root position chord and I like starting on a D major chord the way you play D major first finger is gonna go G on the second fret second finger on the high E on the second fret and third finger on the B string on the third fret and if you strum the top four strings then that makes a D major chord and it sounds really really happy and then from the D major you could go to a root position C major instead of the C major knot or if you want to use the C major knot you could but the way you play C major you go first finger on the B string on the first fret Second finger on the D string on the second fret, third finger on the A string on the third fret, and if you strum all those together, that makes a C major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then th there's one other chord that we're going to need for that part, which is a B flat major, and, th and that, that can get kind of difficult because there's just kind of a big hit on the B flat. But we're going to take first finger on, on, across the entire first fret for B flat major, and then second finger is going to go D on the third fret. Third finger is going to go G on the third fret, and the pinky is going to go on the B string on the third fret. If you strum all those together, that makes a B flat major. That's kind of difficult, that bar major, but it does sound kind of happy if you get it right. Um, but a lot of times with bar chords, like even the G minor or the A minor that we were doing earlier, you'd have the D major with the down, 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 C down, 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 Basic 
how you play it. So good luck.